First at four, history just happened in the sky over a big portion of the United States from Texas to Maine. This is the view of the total eclipse from Toledo, Ohio. It happened there at 312 this afternoon. If you are just joining us, we have been streaming the signal from NASA as the eclipse moved all across the country. This was the view from Carryville, Texas, which is just north of San Antonio. It's been a day filled with wonder and amazement. Oh! And that was the celebration in Luna Pier less than an hour ago. Local four spent time with hundreds of people who took the day off to be part of the total solar eclipse. It's a big deal because we won't see another total solar eclipse in the mainland United States until 2044. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. We have been covering the total eclipse all afternoon long. Right now, the eclipse just exited Canada. It's one of those rare events that brings people together with a sense of sharing something special. We have people spread out to show you as much as possible. Kim Adams is live in Toledo, Ohio this afternoon. Ashley Barrissey in Cleveland to share her experience. But we are going to start with Paula Tupman. She is live in Luna Pier, the only city in Michigan located in the path of totality. Paula, what was it like there? It was amazing. It, it really was. And not the least of which is that it is still going on. And so we're still able to see it, though. Most people have cleared out. They were here for the path of totality. And first of all, I just want to talk about how incredibly cold it got. And so the air actually shifted and it changed and then it started getting dark and then it was almost like music. You could hear the excitement swelling. It started as murmurs and then at 313, how about that? 313, when we hit the path of totality, then all of a sudden people broke out in applause and they were cheering. And then you could hear people yelling, glasses off, glasses off. Yeah, because there was a certain amount of time where you could take your glasses off. And then it was absolutely a spectacular view. And then they yelled, glasses on, glasses on. So they were watching out for other people. And it was wonderment. It was absolutely phenomenal. I've just never seen anything like it. The atmosphere just changed. It got really chilly. It, it was almost not like it was this, it was like a sunset, but not. It was this weird... I don't even know how to describe the light that we saw. Never seen anything like it before. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, as you can see it with your glasses on, and as soon as you take your glasses off, you just see this beautiful glare in the sky, and it was just amazing. It was definitely otherworldly, but the other thing was just the feeling of being around all of these folks, people looking up, this sense of oneness. One woman actually started to weep. She said she could feel her father watching the eclipse uh, from wherever he is. He passed away last year. Uh, it, just, it just seemed to be something bigger than all of us. And of course it is because we're talking about the planets, Karen. You know, you're so right on that. It was more than a visual. It was a feeling. And oh, some of the things that you noticed, changes in wildlife behavior. What did you see there? Oh, so, okay. So remember, I'm in Luna Pier, and this is Lake Erie. So start with, it was an amazing place to watch this. So let's start there. But the interesting thing was, all of a sudden, the birds disappeared. And then I noticed fish coming up to the surface. And so I don't know if they thought it was night or night feeding, but there were fish coming up at the surface. And then all of a sudden we were in the eclipse. And then of course we're watching glasses off. And then the, 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 when the totality was over, then it started warming up and you can see the sun is back out and then the fish disappeared. Oh. And then the birds started collecting on the water again. So I, I mean, it was just kind of interesting watching wildlife in this beautiful place called Luna Pier. Oh my goodness. Paula, we appreciate you sharing the stories there with the people. We'll be checking back with you again at five. What a miraculous afternoon, really. Kim Adams traveled to Toledo, yeah, Ohio. Was. She was catching the view from there. She was joined by Christy McDonald. Okay, so uh, tell us a little bit more. What was it like in Toledo? And I think folks are still talking about it. They are. In fact, a lot of people are still on the Centennial Mall here at the University of Toledo, just kind of soaking it in and enjoying the weather and the atmosphere. We've got sunshine. Temperatures right now are in the 70s. We did notice a seven degree drop in the temp here between 221 and 312. And Christy was here watching it with mm -hmm. me. And at one point during the eclipse, Christy grabs my arms and she goes, take <laughs> off your glasses. <laughs> because that was at the point where we could. And, you know, Paula yeah. talked about it too. It really was wonderment. 
it was more of a party atmosphere. So I yeah. feel like in Luna Pier, um, Paula was describing more of a Zen yeah. moment. But here was excitement. It had been building all afternoon long. And again, with putting music on and everything. And then people were cheering. Um, we also saw couples were standing close, oh, holding yeah. each other. Um, there was a group of young women laying all on the ground yeah. and looking up. But some people in chairs um, trying to take pictures yeah. as well, but cheering. And I think that that was really the excitement. Yeah, we were hoping for a proposal somewhere. We didn't know, find one of looking. those. <laughs> um, but there, I found out there, there are two types of people in the world. Those who scream during an eclipse and those who are zen during an eclipse. That's and right. Christy and I's personality are more zen. Like we were like, we were. shh, let us just rest for a moment. But every, it was just such a celebratory event. And coming up tonight at five, we'll talk a little bit more about the signs of it. One of the reasons why you had to grab my arm was because I was trying not to just look at the corona, but also you could see two planets, possibly as many as four. But yeah. I was looking for Venus and Jupiter, Jupiter in particular, Mars and Saturn a little harder to see. So I got yeah. kind of caught up in that. I was like, rip off the glasses, my friends. I'm fluctuating Take between scientists and tourists. I can't really tell which I am, but we'll talk great. more about the science yeah. tonight at five. But you know, our coverage spans all over that path of totality, including Cleveland, where Ashley Barrissey, she went to document this historical event. Hey there, Kim. And as you know, the path of totality is really narrow in the grand scheme of things, about 100 miles in width. And so what we experienced here compared to Luna Pier and even Toledo was nearly four minutes of totality and an incredibly moving experience. And when you think about how folks come together, usually for sporting events where there could be rivalries involved or political rallies, this was such a unique experience in the fact that Everyone was here to take in just such a serene cosmic spectacle. And the reaction afterwards was just so special with so many people, especially Michiganders who made the trek down here into Ohio. Let's hear from, from some folks in Dearborn. The whole sky went dark. Like it was like, like the sun just went down and, you know, it got really cold and like the wind kind of picked up and you could just see it. Like it was just a ring of like the sun in the sky. It was it was great. I've always been a space kid, so I, like, I really love it. It was awesome. It was incredible. It was so incredible. Like, God, I got so many pictures and everything. It was just a moment to remember for the rest of your life. I know, uh, it's, it's a moving experience, it's isn't it? It's a moving experience for sure. I'm, I can't wait to see the next one. And of course, that next one um, that you'll be able to see in the continental U.S. will be 2044, as far as Michigan, 2099. And so I think a lot of folks that experience this for the first time certainly are marking their calendars to take in totality again in 2044, if, you know, if time allows them to. So a really special experience here. So happy. Everyone's so touched afterwards. A lot of clearing out now. We expected about 30,000 people to join us here at this uh, Total Solar Eclipse Festival here in Cleveland, Ohio and just truly honored to be able to be here and representing Local Ford to cover such a really spectacular event. Ashley, I know this afternoon you, you let the moment breathe, which I really appreciated because you really brought us to that. I could hear some gasps and it was really amazing. Now you saw a partial eclipse before, so give me a comparison in terms of seeing that and then now seeing for the first time in totality, how different was it? You know, you think you know, especially as a scientist, what you're going to expect. And I mean, I, truly speechless as far as what we experience. So when I had the partial eclipse, much like what folks would have experienced in that 99% totality coverage for a good chunk of southeastern Michigan. Um, but when you had the glasses on here, it was like a light switched off and you couldn't see anything with the glasses because as you know, when you have these glasses, you look at the sun, you see an orange ball. But when that sun is completely eclipsed with the moon, your glasses then go black. So that's when you know you have that moment to take them off. And there is this beautiful glow and ring around the moon that you really can't capture with your phone. So that's forever going to be ingrained in my memory. And then I made a point to look 360 around me to see what would be sunset colors all around me here in Cleveland and it was just a very calm and serene experience. And so, yeah, it was like a light switch, not to mention the temperature change. And then the light switch went back on and we had to put the glasses on and we're back in the daytime and temperatures warmed up. So um, if you ever get the chance to experience it, I would highly recommend it in the years to come. Such a cool afternoon. Ashley, we appreciate all of your hard work. Thank you so, so much. By the way, the eclipse was also a big deal in Mexico. Here's a look at the crowds at Mazatlan, the first place it was visible as it moved from the Pacific Ocean across North America. The weather was perfect for viewing there as well. And NASA shows us the moment 
when the moon stood right between the earth and sun in Mexico. The eclipse moved from Mexico into Texas, spread across 15 states. Of course, we're going to have many more highlights for you and reaction when you join us tonight at five and six.